Introducing Dr. Jackie Damages. Woo! Welcome to the show. My name is Dr. Damages. We are coming to you from the greatest city in the world. New York city. Yes, 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 yes. New York City is so great that we are facing a second wave of coronavirus. What? Oh, yeah. It's, it's sad that we're going through this again. Where are we going to get a help from this time? From who? As soon as April, the vaccine will be available to the entire general population, with the exception of places like New York State. <laughs> what a minute, what a minute, what a minute. What's, what's, what's his name again? What's his, his remind me, what's, uh, is he still in Washington, D.C.? <laughs> so, President Trump said that when the vaccine, the coronavirus vaccine, comes out in April of 2021, that he will not give it to New York City or New York State as a whole. <laughs> because, because the governor of New York said he will make sure that, that the vaccine was safe before New Yorkers get it. Not you bring light and strike, who the ad price? No money to buy rice, everything she don't hide. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Sarah Kay. Thank you, my man. You know, Trump never, never cared about New Yorkers. And we don't care about him either. <laughs> Which is one, one, go, let's draw. <laughs> Mind you, New York governor only said that his team of experts will review the vaccine because he was worried about how Trump was pushing scientists to approve a vaccine before the election to help him win a second term. So, April 2021, vaccine distribution. I might be seeing something. <laughs> no, 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 no. Would, would Trump be? No. No. Would Trump be in prison? But no, I don't think so. <laughs> in any case, in any case, he will not be handing out vaccines from prison, would he? Nah, it's not possible. Anyway, the surge is all around the US. Almost 200,000 new cases every day. 200,000, can you imagine that? Now, the only difference between the first wave of coronavirus and the second wave is that during the first wave, President Trump was pretending to be the President of the United States. But during the second wave, he has stopped pretending to be the President. Now, he's acting as if he's the President-elect. <laughs> yes, over 11 million Americans have been infected by coronavirus. And more than 250,000 Americans have died. By the time President Trump leaves office on January 20th, 2021, another 300,000 Americans will have died. Now, let me rephrase that last line for those watching from uh, Donald Trump's uh, prayer headquarters in Nigeria. So by the time President Trump leaves office on January 21, another 1 million Americans will have died of COVID. What do you see as the biggest threat to your transition right now, given President Trump's unprecedented attempt to obstruct and delay a smooth transfer of power? More people may die. <laughs> I know, I know. I've not seen anything like this crazy fantasy of Africans who believe that God sent Trump to the world to save us all. He made men who were marginally sensible to become cuckoo entirely. Take a look. The Associated Press said that Joe Biden is president. Ha! 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 Yeah. Some boldly predicted that Joe Biden would be so defeated that he will commit suicide. <laughs> yep, let's listen to the man. I see a politician in America because of Donald Trump commit suicide. Then, then there were those who emphasized that the media should blast their prophecy out to the world, like uh, our former super ego defender, uh, Taribo South. Is that, is that his name, Taribo South? Is it south or west? Anyway, I don't remember. Watch him. 
Now I want you to shoot this out the way I want it. Donald Trump will win the election with a sliced split edge over Joe Biden. So quote me. And I want it to be out before time. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> he scored their own goal. That's what they call it. What he did. I'm always marveled at the audacity of these men of God. The more ignorant they are, the higher and bolder their audacity. Sasha! Tweet that out. <laughs> Instead of telling their followers to off the mic, yeah, they are saying blast it. You see, while they are busy wasting their minds, taking in garbage, conspiracy theories, like how computer glitches switched votes and ballots with invisible marks, anything to deny reality, the con man that they are fighting for, Donald Trump, is busy fighting for his pocket. Look at the headline. What? What, what did I do again? I called the president a con man. Oh, he's used to that. He's used to that. <laughs> Don't you know that whenever a genius arrives like Donald Trump, clowns like me call them con men. It happens all the time. Go through history. <laughs> now, I wonder how many of these uh, African Trump supporters have donated to Donald Trump's legal defense fund. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a defense fund that Trump's lawyer, you know, designed so well that 70% of the fund will go to paying off the millions of dollars in debt that uh, Trump campaign incurred during the election. Oh, yeah. Look at the headline now. Ah, look at it. Mind you, mind you. Trump raised billions of dollars for the campaign. And as usual, he wasted it. <laughs> the same way he wasted his father's money, uh, his casino money, his foundation's money, his fake university's money, and his fake airline's money. Everything, the same way. Where, where do we stop? What a genius of a man, you know? Genius. So for so-called educated Africans, to allow themselves to be blinded and fooled by a certified con man <laughs> who fooled some people in America is beyond me. I'm telling you, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Yep. The story of the 2020 US election is that Trump could not fool enough Americans twice. Seriously, <laughs> I gave myself a dozen dirty slaps. The other day, when I realized, oh my God, epiphany, that the people I was arguing with about Donald Trump's uh, uh, performance and the outcome of this election, the presidential election in America, were the same people who argued with me that they were on their way to becoming very rich from investment in that, um, what is it called now? The Russian Ponzi scheme uh, called MMM, yes. The same people. I was so stupid. So I wasted my life, my time. Ah, it is the same thing with these pastors. These Ponzi scheme pastors and all the assistants feeding you all with conspiracy theories about impending heavenly intervention in your life through Donald Trump. I know you are vulnerable, poor things. You know, I feel bad. By the time you watch this video, Trump will have collected enough money from his uh, fundraiser that he will have given up his fight for the presidency. Oh yeah, it will happen. <laughs> imagine, imagine it. A billionaire begging for money. What can be more ridiculous? We'll be right back with Nigerian stories and African stories. Have you been working so hard abroad and thinking of going into real estate and making a nice return in a short time? There is a woman who started from selling palm oil and okra in Lagos, but is now a multi-millionaire real estate mogul. Yes, Grace Ofre will make it happen for you. For as little as $5.7 million, yes, just $15,000, you can buy a piece of land in Lekki, Lagos, the good part. Go ahead and visit her website, lifecardcompany.com. There you can join her online classes at her school website, lifecarduniversity.com. Contact them and tell them that Dr. Damages sent you by using the promo code DOCTOR. 
and you will get 5% discount on land, apartments, and homes. For more, follow Grace Ofere on Instagram at Grace underscore Ofere and on Facebook and on Twitter. Thank you. All I want to say now, they don't really care about us. Not you bring light and strike, where should they add price? No money to buy rice, everything she don't hide. I saw she don't waste strike, no panna they bring light. She you see this guap woman, she don't really care about us. <laughs> All I want to say now, they don't really care about us. You see, you see, I've been looking for a metaphor to explain Nigeria and the kind of democracy that we practice. Why is it that democracy is refusing to work in Nigeria? Finally, I found it. Eureka! Take a look. <laughs> that happened somewhere in northern Nigeria. Some say that it's in uh, Kano. I cannot confirm it. Trust me, trust me. Those people pushing the horse to get into Kekena Pepe, eh? they have the same one vote that you have. <laughs> yeah. You know, whenever, whoever, you know, what am I saying? Whoever thought that a horse could sit down comfortably inside the Kekena Pepe, eh? that person needs his head examined. <laughs> now, if you understand that, Maybe you'll be able to understand why Kano State, they, um, they have this Hishbab police. Why they destroyed 2 million bottles of beer. What 200 million naira? Look at it. Yes, 200 million naira worth of beer destroyed. Now, speaking during the event, the governor of Kano State, Governor Ganduja, yeah, that's the bribe taking governor, who was represented by his deputy said this, and I quote, even in Kano, we have banned consumption of beer in all parts of the states. I say, excellent move. Good move, you know. According to Shishbab board, the consumption of alcohol can distort the mental capability of a person. Good point. That explains why coronavirus vaccine was made in Kano, where people do not drink alcohol. Not in America or Germany where they drink anyhow. In Kano, I said it, smart people. <laughs> anyway, another reason why alcohol is banned in Kano is because it is against Islam. Okay, that's another good reason. And, and nobody can challenge that. I mean, I mean it, nobody can challenge that. No problem. As far as we know, Kano State, yeah, the government of Kano State is still not rejecting value-added tax collected from selling beer in other parts of Nigeria. Why is that? Isn't it an indirect way of collecting proceeds from alcohol consumption? Is it not? Think about it. Now, as we, we read last week, Dubai, that is uh, in, in the United Arab Emirates, is making more and more provisions for those who live or who visit the Emirates, who are not Muslims and who want to drink beer and drink alcohol to do so without any problem. Look at the news now, look at it. <laughs> but in Kano, ah, uh, the state in what is supposed to be a secular country called Nigeria, we show that they are religious by destroying bottles of beer. You know, you know Dubai, they, they, they don't really know, they don't know God. You know, we are very close to God and very smart as a result. I kid you not, you know. And that is why we are the ones in Kano who found the cure for cancer. We oh, yeah. are. You see, chances are that they did not compensate the owners of the beer. <laughs> of course. I mean, you can say it. Fine. Whoever decided to take alcohol into Kano should know it's against the law. Good point. The only question is, um, <laughs> will everyone be okay if each state in the federation, if they start passing laws that infringe on the right of other people? Will, are we going to be okay? I'm just asking a question. And when Kanu state governor was caught red-handed collecting bribes in dollars, 
the same Hishbar police did not rush to the government house to grab the man and cut off his hand. The way he said in Sharia, they didn't. Nonsense. Anyway, talking about people who need their heads examined, a former minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has this reaction to the election of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris as the new incoming leaders of America. Take a look. Yep! This Cambridge-trained Nigerian lawyer is calling U.S. Vice President-elect Kamala Harris Jezebel. <laughs> he called Joe Biden a puppet and said that their presidency is Satan's presidency. I know, right? <laughs> now, if this tweet had come from a clown like me, it would have been very funny. <laughs> but it came from a man who used to be a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Imagine the kind of policy such great mind put in place as minister. You know, a man that a pastor just recently prophesied that he will be the president of Nigeria very soon. Yes, President Femi Fani Kayode is coming right um, after President Ayo Fayoshe. <laughs> Nigeria don't suffer. Yeah? With people like that in government, it's obvious why things are the way they are. It's, it's clear. You see, I don't care what Femi Faneka Ede smokes. He's not the first person to smoke something. No. Nobody that I know who smokes, even those who smoke harder stuff than what this man smokes, can talk nonsense like that. Nobody. Bad sons. Hello friends, let's talk about your chat app. Can the app that you currently use translate messages from Chinese or Portuguese to your preferred language of choice? Will it let you chat in Hausa or Yubo, Yoruba or Urubo? Languages, whatever language. I'm happy to introduce you to Olango chat app. Olango services are rich and customized to bring you real values. Olango apps, taking you where other apps only dream of. Who says something good cannot come from Zamfara State? Now, apart from their gold, which they are enjoying themselves, I have looked, I didn't see the proceeds from Zamfara Gold entering Nigeria's budget. You know, the people of Zamfara have something else to celebrate. Zamfara State Government just announced that it was cancelling the outrageous retirement packages of its former governors and deputy governors. Unbelievable. Quara State said that they will do the same thing. But some states are refusing to follow. One of those states is Lagos State. Now, here is what a former governor or deputy governor is entitled to in Lagos State. Number one, residential house each for the ex-governor and ex-deputy governor. They build a house for them. Even if they have 10 before they became governor, they build a new one. Number two, residential houses in federal capital territory for the ex-governor who spent two consecutive terms. Hey, sorry, I'm body. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Uh, you and Trump, you are losers. <laughs> Number three, six new cars every three years. Wait a minute. I used to think that Bolatinubu was the one buying those, those cars. I didn't know it's Lagos State that is buying it for him. Damn. Number four. 100% of the basic salary of the serving governor. That is 7.7 .7 million per annum. Wow. Number five, free health care for him and members of his family anywhere in the world. Unbelievable. Number six, furniture allowance of 300% of their annual salary, which comes up to 23.3 million. Wow. Number seven, House maintenance allowance, which is 10% of their basic pay, about 700,000 naira. Number eight, utility allowance, which is 20% of their salary, which is 1.5 million. Number nine, car maintenance allowance, 30% of their basic pay, which is 2.3 million. Number 10, oh, of course, entertainment allowance, 10% of their basic pay, which is over 700,000 naira. Number 11, Personal assistant to earn 25% of the governor's annual basic pay, which is 1.9 million. 
Oh, this is very important. Security, of course. Eight policemen and two DSS attached to the governor for the rest of his life. Hi! Sorry, come, 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 play the music for me again. Not you bring light and strike to where she they add price. No money to buy rice. Everything she don't hide. I saw she the was tight. No panda they bring light. She is a disguise and she not really care about us. All I want to say now, they don't really care about us. <laughs> when you think that the National Assembly cost us 128 billion naira a year, you will be shocked to know that since 1999, retired governors and their deputies, including speakers of the various state houses of assembly, they cost us more. Since 1999, all 36 states in Nigeria, each have produced at least three governors. Retired, yeah. <laughs> three multiplied by 36 will give you 108 people who get this kind of outrageous benefits. Add that <laughs> their deputies and the speakers of the state houses. You have over 300 people who get this kind of outrageous benefits. And these are people who do not need the money. <laughs> they don't. Don't forget that as governors, each of them, they have collected hundreds of millions of Naira each month as security votes. And that money don't give any account to anybody. Some of them are now ministers, while some are senators. Others stole enough money while in office that <laughs> they are set for life. What am I saying? Their grandchildren are set for life. Someone like Rotimi Amoichi, <laughs> you know, Minister for Transportation. Yeah, he was former speaker, former governor, and now a minister. Technically, he is entitled to four streams of government income for the rest of his life. And he's not done yet. According to this Grammy Award-winning musical group, Amoichi is getting ready to add former president to his pension package. Watch them. <laughs> so, when next you think of how we are wasting money, remember your former governors and deputy governors. They are the SUVs that guzzle your state funds. And they don't care about us. They don't. They don't care. They don't. Come on. All I want to say now, they don't care about us. My fellow Nigerians abroad, when you moved abroad, you did not take all your families and friends with you, did you? You left some at home, but you did not abandon them. Of course not. Now, you want them alive and healthy when you return. Do you need a good doctor to take care of your loved one's health in Nigeria? Pro Health HMO Limited is a world-class health maintenance organization that you need to manage their health care needs. Pro Health has a variety of new health plans designed for you. They will manage preventative and chronic conditions and also medical emergencies for your loved ones. At Pro Health, they connect your loved ones to primary care doctors like me, specialists, reputable medical labs, and pharmacists. Oh, they are wonderful people. They provide dependable, affordable coverage, great services, and they put a release. First, Pro Health will manage their health and keep them for you until you return. Your loved ones won't worry about paying any medical bills anymore. You have taken care of it. You won't worry about them using the money for their medicine to buy a shabby or pay tight or marry a second wife. <laughs> no more. Visit their website at www.prohealthhmo.com. You can also download ProHealth app at Google Play Store for online registrations and payment. Call Chris on 081 2946-1142. Get 5% discount by telling them Dr. Damages sent you. Thank you. Here is only in Nigeria story. Only in Nigeria story is brought to you by Help Me Waka. Help Me Waka the people who run errands for you. Hi, in Subwanago, problem solved. Diasporan family, do you live abroad? and have an errand that you want someone to carry out for you in Nigeria. Introducing Help Me Waka. Go to their website, helpmewaka.com. Use the promo code 
doctor and they will give you a five dollar discount help me work out so a lady has cancelled her marriage plans after she discovered that her fiance's family worships snake look at the headline <laughs> now correction correction that is a python and not a snake my friends all pythons are members of the snake family but not all snakes are pythons. Sasha! Tweet that out. Now, now, the lady went to the village to see her fiancé's mother. You know, at night, a python entered the fiancé's room. The lady wanted to kill it. But her soon-to-be mother-in-law said, No, 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 stop, don't do that, stop, stop. <laughs> the mother-in-law-to-be told the lady that it was a taboo to kill a python in the village. Now, the one that <laughs> blew the mind of the lady was that the mother-in-law then told her that a python came to welcome her to the family. Then, <laughs> the mother-in-law-to-be used a stick and removed the python. Simple. So, what is the problem? I don't understand why this is news. It's, seriously, I don't. I told this story just to prepare Mamu Doka's incoming co-wife. I don't want to... I don't want her to embarrass me like this. What? What did you hear? Didn't you hear that Ned, Ned Mwoko, Regina Daniels, her husband, is preparing to take wife number seven? Didn't you hear that? Look at the headline. So why are you, why are you looking at me like that? I just talked about possibility two. Why? <laughs> you see what I did? I went all the way with the Python story just to bring, bring that story as part of it. That's it. Hi, I have some great news from Sendwave. Sendwave wants to help you send with love. Now, remember to use the promo code before you make your first transfer. Otherwise, it won't work. So what are you waiting for? My concern for today is taken from page 419 of the book, The Wise Crackers of J.J. Rollins, by J.J. Rollins, of course. And it says, the test of religious belief is not in pious platitudes and cautious charity, but in positive and creative action. Yep. He's talking to all of you in Canada and all of you hawking your business on uh, uh, Legacy by the Expressway. Anyway, we lost J.J. Rollins to COVID-19 last week. Godspeed, my man. Godspeed. You can follow us on Twitter at Dr. Damages and on Instagram at Dr. Damages and on Facebook at Dr. Damages and also you can support us by coming to Patreon. Go to www.patreon slash Dr. Damages and help us out. One dollar, two dollar. We don't have any supporter. We don't have any grant. We don't have anything. Help us. Help us. We want to continue this show. Please. Okay. Thank you. One dollar is enough. Two dollars. Three. Whatever you can afford. Ten. Hundred. Anything. Help us. Until next week, I'm Dr. Damages. I diagnose. You Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for, for subscribing. We are getting there. We may reach 40,000 by the end of the year. Our target is 100,000. Whatever happened. Anyway, we are happy. We are happy you subscribe. Thank you, thank you. It's not about you. You are good. You are the good guy. You know, it's, it's the other one. You. Aha. You. You just watch and you don't subscribe. Why is that? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>